Next up is um, Andrew Durbin. He's a art uh, critic and writer and poet based in New York. So let's welcome Andrew. I want to be moved so that I can be here. Um, I'm just going to read from a, a book I'm working on now. I purchase two small domestic palms and place them in opposite corners of my bedroom. I don't get much sunlight in the room, but the woman who sold them to me says they'll be fine because palms like these grow in the dark. She doesn't sell pots large enough to replace the plastic ones they come in, so I set them on top of old plates in case they leak, which they often do when I water them. In two weeks, the one in the far corner of my room, where the most sunlight hits, starts to wilt. It stalks brown, gathering a fuzzy white dust that clings to the plant until eventually it collapses in a heap. Gnats gather and bob in the air over its dying body, circling the palm in the concerted manner of a ritual. I wave them away and switch it with the other palm in the room, which was doing fine, though not exactly thriving, and trim all the dead branches of the dying one until it is a third of the size, its original size. The dying plant doesn't come back as I expect it to, and the healthy palm wilts with it, finally falling over as the other did. I move them both into the kitchen, which receives abundant sunlight all day, and water them with miracle Grow purchased from the same woman who sold me the palms. After a few days, the move seems to kill them both. I drag them to the curbside of my apartment building, where I leave them for dead. Within a week, they both rise up, sprout new, deep green fronds, and rotate upward with new life. Someone picks them up before I can bring them back in and they're gone. Blow up the law, Helen Zuzu writes. Cops define the era. Sit at the cafe. There is a gym close to here. Dating app. Get together. Go alone. Mood. The problem begins with you, he says. The problem and the conditions that allow it to be identified as such suggest that your role in it is essential and that all of this could be avoided were you to leave. I leave. I tell him that the book is called A Fire in the Belly by C. Carr, but he asks why I said Emily. I never said Emily, I tell him, as the subway comes to a full stop in the tunnel between Brooklyn and Manhattan. Generationally speaking, nothing has changed except the coordinates by which we locate the landscape of our politics, or the politics of our landscape. Explicate from the, f the use of those resources a future. Upstate, the protest begins. Upstate, I sit at a dinner in a yard flush with berry bushes and discuss the MTA's budget surplus. Every surplus results from an illusory economy seeking to absorb you within it. During a march across the Williamsburg Bridge in solidarity with Ferguson, Missouri, where Mike Brown's killer had been let off the hook, a poet named Eric Linsker is arrested by the police and charged with punching an officer. He has a bag of hammers with him. The finger episode, by which I mean the party where you stuck your index finger in my ass and made someone else smell it, a gesture that almost reduced me to tears, still keeps me up some nights. I just keep thinking of her face when you ask her to smell your hand. The year in destruction, the year of the sheep, the year of those fireworks, the year of palms, the year of email, the year of your car, the year of the alleyway, the year of the Aleppo soap, the year of Aleppo, the year of Annika Yee, the year of the refrigerator, the year of the father, the year of the text message, the year of the avenue, the year in passing, the years as swatches. The fake human skull wrapped in saran wrap sits on a pile of other skulls like it. Its yellow plastic makes it look real, or at least aged to a semblance of reality I find uncanny. A public token and cheap homage to time. Halloween time. And when I pass it, I stop to take a picture with my phone and send it to my friend. When she receives it, she writes back, what is it? I respond that it's a fake skull. Happy Halloween, I write. She begins to respond, the small iMessage bubble floating up to indicate that she's typing, but after a few seconds it disappears and she never responds. I think to buy the skull but decide against it. Cancel that. Romantic poetry didn't know what it was missing. At Kennedy Airport I take a seat near a man wearing shredded jeans and a plaid shirt over a sweat-stained white tee. With his hiking backpack leaned up against the smoked glass wall next to him, he looks like he's just walked across the country, evidence of, an, of a relationship to nature that might be truer or deeper than mine. I write this down in a notebook thinking I could use it later. 
Is nature true or deep? Reification of the sublime in his and all those bodies walking about. The airport speakers play Taylor Swift, tuned to those radio dreams of metropolitan space, extorted by global capital for the purpose of ubiquitous homogeneity come true. Welcome to New York, Taylor Swift sings. It's been waiting for you. Finally risen to the occasion of a world not hers, and yet she self-proclaims her kingdom of the very newly saved. The quaint village lights, the cafe on Avenue 6th Avenue, the flight attendants circle the smooth floor, and the hiker sighs after what must have been a long trip. I covertly photograph him with my iPhone, but the flash goes off and he notices me. He shakes his head, grinding his square jaw in what seems like irritation, but doesn't say anything and looks away. I'm grateful he doesn't confront me, so I continue to survey, a little more carefully this time. I turn off the flash and capture him. He's poring over a water-damaged journal in which he seems to have written several formal poems, maybe even sonnets, in an unreadable cursive. Poetry really is everywhere. For something to be everywhere, it must be online. Conveniently, poetry is all over the internet because the web itself achieves a kind of poetry, rendering most online bodies poetic machines and thereby enacting in the proliferation of that messy language the illimitable sense of a socialized network of busy intersections pervading all discourses, especially critical ones, infusing most things written and said with an enhanced vitality, all of it glowing on screens scattered across much of the planet. Or have I been lied to? He closes the notebook when his boarding class is called. It's business, so either he's not a hiker or he's a rich hiker, and he pulls up his backpack, slinging it over his shoulder as he crosses the crowd clustered at the narrow gate and slips into it with an ease that suddenly makes me miss him. I forget the feeling once my class is called and I board a jet to London. Later, over the North Atlantic, I wake up at 4 a.m. East Coast time to see out my window a curvature of gray and blue, bent by a watery alien light that resembles the flush of dishwater as it finally drains out of the kitchen sink. There can be no alien or otherworldly light on Earth, despite any claims that might attempt to release us into some greater fiction. I felt alone, and the flight was mostly empty. I have not always been careful. I have been tricked into cheap flights. A bot has asked me if I wanted to be friends on Facebook, and I have accepted its request. I've opened an email from an acquaintance with a phishing Google Doc attached. I've made dumb admissions of fleeting passwords to scammy sites, unlocked accounts for strangers, signed up for gay porn only to realize it was a tricky financial ruse, and accidentally had my chase card frozen in Chicago when I withdrew $200 for drugs at a golf club. Quinine water once spilled over my laptop in Bushwick, destroying the hard drive, which I hadn't backed up. Later, the gentle acceleration of a plane that usually puts everyone around me to sleep, but always leaves me awake and jittery, bucked my next computer out of my lap and onto the floor, breaking it, and again, I hadn't backed it up. Nothing compares to the hike that overlooks LA, nothing compares to losing all those useless files, and nothing compares to reading Ben's book of poems about debt at Kennedy Airport, where I focused in on his interest in the documentary procedures of commerce and our participation in the various markets we rely on, including, and especially, the job market. I've never kept a job for very long, the preconditions of employment, dedication, being so nearly impossible as to abstract every morning to a timeless, flat plane of actions I can't make any sense of, brushing my teeth and putting on my clothes, maybe jerking off while staring at my face in the mirror, drinking orange juice or coffee, eating a banana, all of it seemingly out of order or finally pledged to a disorder that overrides the desire to put myself together again until I'm late and too often too late, and I'm encouraged to, look, encouraged to look for a job elsewhere. Regardless of my disinterest in definitive employment, the pernicious logic of the market still wields its heavy and not so beautiful power over me and everyone else, despite all efforts to debunk it. Pleasures do not accrue with accomplishing any task. Your boss is lying to you. And there was three more sentences, but um, I left them on another page, so that's it. Uh, the last line is, uh, Jobs, uh, I don't even remember. Thank you.